Big Boot on Pens back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have a pen for you that I was excited to get my hands on. Uh, it's interesting when luxury brands come out with entry-level pens. Uh, recently, I reviewed the new Mirage from Visconti, which I was very impressed with. Uh, Visconti did a very good job of creating a pen that stays true to the value of the brand, but at a more palatable price for a larger percentage of users. What I have for you today is the entry-level pen for another luxury brand, and that would be SD DuPont. And the pen is called the Defi Millennium. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about this unique design. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Coles of London, the U.S. distributor for SD DuPont, for providing the pens you will see today for review. Um, I have four of them to share, uh, two fountain pens, a rollerball, and a ballpoint. Now, SD DuPont is a luxury brand, uh, and their pens typically have luxury prices. The models for them I have previously reviewed are typically like in the $800 to $1,200 range, if not more. Um, I'll talk about the price of this pen in a bit, but calling it an entry-level pen in this case means an entry-level into the brand. The pen arrives in this box here. Um, it has the name of the company here on the front, right here, right there. And then inside, there's a few things. There is a, a little warning uh, about a magnet, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, then there is a use and care guide and some warranty information. And then there is also a cartridge. Set this stuff aside. Now, the Defeat is available in five different lacquered finishes. There is matte orange, a polished black, a matte red, and a polished blue. Each of those have a polished chrome trim. Uh, and then there's also a matte black with gunmetal trim. I have samples of just about all of these colors, which I'll show you during the size comparisons. But the one we'll be taking a closer look at is my favorite of the bunch, which is the matte black with the gunmetal trim. Uh, this is the SD DuPont Defi Millennium. Uh, Defi is the French word for challenge. Uh, it does have a sleek, retro, minimalistic style. Um, the cap and top of the barrel, as well as the tip of the barrel, have that gunmetal chrome, and then the barrel has that matte black lacquered treatment over a metal body. Um, it is thinner than um, the pens I would typically gravitate to, um, but I think it provides a rather sleek and refined look. Um, let's take a look at the parts and features of this pen. Uh, the top of the cap is angled. Uh, it is adorned with the traditional SD DuPont D logo. Uh, this transitions into the clip. Uh, on the side of the clip, it is engraved with the serial number as well as made in France. Uh, these pens are indeed manufactured in France. Uh, this clip does articulate. The spring action is, I call it sufficiently strong. It gets the job done and accommodates uh, materials in varying thicknesses. It works just fine in pockets. Um, the side of the cap is accentuated by seven subtle grooves encircling it. Uh, it adds a nice tactile element to the cap. Um, the transition from the cap to barrel is very smooth. And then below that transition is a pseudo band where it's nicely stamped with the company name of SD DuPont, as well as Paris. Uh, then there's an angled transition from the chrome to the matte black portion of the barrel. Um, I'm a big fan of matte, the matte black look on pens. I, I would classify this material as being a, a rather light matte as opposed to a heavier matte, which can uh, really mute the look of some material and tone down the color. The color on these pens still has a fair amount of pop to it. Uh, the barrel tapers down at a fairly even angle, and at the end of the barrel, there is another gunmetal chrome section mirroring the angle on the top of the cap, and the very end is flat. Um, I will say the chrome trim on this pen is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Um, I find myself wiping it down on a fairly regular basis to keep it looking as neat as possible. Uh, speaking of magnets, the cap is magnetic, uh, or more accurately, the section is magnetic. That's where the actual magnet is. Um, I'd say that the magnet, magnet is sufficiently robust. Um, you really don't feel like the cap will inadvertently disengage, but it still can be removed without a significant effort. 
Um, I mentioned the warning included with this pen. Uh, they had a little warning about magnets advising you to keep the pen away from things like credit cards or your cell phone or other items which uh, might be sensitive to magnetic fields like pacemakers. Um, I was actually curious uh, to see where on a body a pacemaker is installed. Uh, now it can vary, but many times it's right around here or here, essentially right where you would have a shirt pocket. So if you have a pacemaker, you might not want to put this pen or any other magnetic pen in your front pocket. Um, once you've removed the cap, you will find what I feel to be a very cool feature of this pen, which is the hooded nib. Uh, this is a stainless steel nib, and it's only available in medium. Uh, the nib is not coated in a gunmetal finish, but with how little of it it is exposed, uh, you really don't even notice that. Uh, you'll see here in the writing sample, but I find this nib to be very nice. I have yet to be disappointed by an SD DuPont nib. Um, I'd categorize it as writing on the uh, fine side of medium. And here's a look at the minimally exposed plastic feed. Um, I really like the sleek, retro-inspired profile of this nib in this section. Uh, the section is chrome, and there is a significant step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, while I do find the section to be rather slick, uh, the design of the section actually prevents that from being an issue. Um, the forward portion of the section here isn't overly long. If I grip the section here too far forward, where I typically would, um, you know, the underside of my grip tends to get caught on the angled portion just under the feed and pushes my grip way too far forward to be comfortable. So I find myself gripping the pen a little bit further back directly on the stair step transition to the barrel. Um, even though both levels of where I'm gripping are slick chrome, uh, holding it right there on the edge does a great job of keeping my grip in place. And I don't find uh, myself having to shift it around while it's in that position. Uh, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post, uh, and it does post securely. Um, I find that it does backweight the pen just a touch, not too much, but just enough for me to prefer you to use this pen unposted. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Um, I have this currently loaded with a cartridge that I have filled with some SD DuPont ink. Um, I actually had a little incident filling this cartridge. My fault, not the fault of the pen. I'll share some more about that during the writing sample as well. Uh, the SD DuPont Defee Millennium is available at a wide variety of retailers and sells for $348, which is by far the least expensive offering in the SD DuPont lineup. But I don't feel that they sacrifice quality with that price. Um, it is a solid, well-made pen with some sleek and interesting looks. Um, and I love the retro feel of the hooded nib as well. Uh, with a price in the mid-300s, would I have preferred to have a gold nib included? Sure. Uh, but that potentially would have raised the price to the mid-400 range, making it a little less entry level. Um, that being said, with the performance of this nib, I really don't miss it not being gold. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons. Um, I'll show you what the other colors and options in this lineup look like, as well as provide a writing sample. Okay, here we go with the size comparisons for the SD DuPont Defee Millennium. Um, I just really like the sleek look of this particular pen. You can see there is a bit of a fingerprint magnet on there, but I, uh, I did want to share with you some of the other colors that are available. Um, this is the orange. I think this orange looks really nice, and this orange really pops. Uh, and this is with the chrome trim. And then we have the red. Again, I think the red looks really nice. Uh, and this red here, and this is with the uh, rollerball, uh, I think it looks really nice with the rollerball as well. And then I also have, it, but you know what? You need to be a little bit careful because you can see the magnet is wanting to play with that and push the pen a little bit. So when you have pens with magnets in them, you kind of have to be careful around other pens, especially other ones with magnets or metal that it might attract to. And then finally, here is the, uh, this is the ballpoint. Uh, and the ballpoint has a bit of a different look to it. It doesn't have a cap and it's all one solid piece. Um, something that is 
kind of difficult to see or is really difficult to see uh, on this black version uh, is that here on the clip there is a stripe of black down the middle of the clip. Now that black actually exists on this one as well, but it's just really hard to see with that, uh, with the uh, gunmetal trim, but it is present there. Um, but I just think that's a nice accent to have there on the clip. In regard to some size comparisons with some other pens, um, here it is with a Visconti Pina Farina, which kind of has a similar look to it or a somewhat similar look to it. Uh, and that this is another pen, and this one is actually from Pen and Farina. Again, this is the Pen and Farina 2, or PM2, uh, or PF2, excuse me, uh, and that I'll be reviewing this one here in the fairly near future. And it kind of has a, a similar look to it as well. And then finally, here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear, uh, and this is the Blue Cobra. And then with three more pens, here it is with a Pilot Custom 823. Uh, here it is with a Diplomat Arrow. And then finally, here it is with a Leonardo Momento Zero. This is the Fig Boot on Pens model. Uh, this is actually uh, a prototype that I had made in, uh, in matte. Uh, I had a matte one made as well as the uh, polished, and I ended up uh, going with the polished look for the final product, but I still have this one with matte, and uh, I, I think it looks nice, but I kind of preferred the way the colors pop a little bit more uh, on the polished version. But that's what it looks like in comparison. In regard to uncapped comparisons, here it is with the 823, and here it is with the Pro Gear from Sailor, and here it is with that Leonardo Momento Zero. Oh, I also wanted to give you another closer look at this uh, hooded section. I just think that that looks really classy and looks really neat. Oh, I, I mentioned that I would talk about a little incident that I have. Uh, that I have this filled with some SD DuPont ink, and when I went to go fill up an empty cartridge, I pulled out this cartridge here. And I pulled that out, as well as my syringe, and I filled this up, and I went ahead and filled this up. But the problem is, as you can see here, this is an empty cartridge to where there's no end to it. So literally I squirted ink in here and it just squirted right out the other end. So uh, yes, when you are trying to fill an empty cartridge, make sure that it's an actual full cartridge and not one of these kind of spacer cartridges uh, because that will lead to uh, some major ink spillage. And I speak from personal experience on that. So here we go with the writing sample for the ST DuPont. And this is the uh, Defi, maybe it even has an accent on it, or maybe the accent's on the E. I don't know, I don't know my French. And it is the Millennium. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And I've mentioned it a couple of times, but this is an ink from SD DuPont which is their royal blue. This is what the ink looks like. I'd say it's on the lighter side of royal blue. It's not especially saturated. Um, it's not as saturated as something like the Jay Herban Louis XIV, uh, and that it's even not as saturated as something like Mont Blanc's royal blue, but you could see how it compares. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like. Uh, I think they have a, a uh, this is what the bottle looks like. I believe they have different bottles now, but this was just an interesting bottle just because it's so shallow. When you open this up, the mouth is really wide and you kind of have to get the uh, pen in there at a really odd angle. So it, uh, while it looks nice, it's a little awkward to use. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I really enjoyed this nib. It, uh, for a steel nib, I believe, feel it performs very well. It's uh, fairly smooth. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Um, the 
ink flow, I'd say is on the medium side. It doesn't feel super heavy in regard to reverse writing. I don't even know if it, yeah, I guess you could do reverse writing on here. You can a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily say a hooded nib is meant for reverse writing. And then in regard to some fast writing, the feed does an adequate job of keeping up. So there we have the SD DuPont Defi Millennium. Um, I, you know, I was really pleased with this pen. I was interested uh, to get a closer look at it. Uh, and that once I had some time to uh, spend time with it, I was uh, very surprised. Not surprised, but just uh, pleasantly surprised at how much I cared for it, especially for a pen that is a little bit on the thinner side compared to what I personally prefer. But I, but I do like the hooded nib and, and I do just kind of like the, uh, the overall look and styling to this model. So uh, it's nice to see SD DuPont with a, price, with a pen that's priced, you know, it's not necessarily inexpensive, but compared to some of their other pens, I think this is a good job as, as far as providing an entry level to their brand. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.